Right. Um, the last last problem that we are going to discuss, the last of the nasty problems, is problem number six, which is collinearity. Collinearity. So this refers to a situation in which two or more predictor variables are closely related to one another, right? So these variables, predictor variables are related to one another and it poses problems in the regression since it can be difficult to determine what, what are the individual effects of, of, of these variables that are related to each other. If let's say TV was very, very closely related to radio advertising, it would be difficult for us to know what is the impact of TV advertising by itself. You know what I mean? What is it? Let, let's say we now want to do our budgeting. If there's collinearity, we might end up spending uh, our budgeting amount in 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 a, in a in a medium that really does not give us high sales. Just because collinearity collinearity hid hid that fact from us because it was related to another variable, right? So how would you identify? How would you explain collinearity and the, the effects. Let's look at this. Let's look at um, one of the one, one thing that we drew earlier on. We drew our RSS. Remember, if we drew our RSS with beta 1 and beta 0, and we said these contour lines are going to are going to relate areas of similar RSS, right? And we said this one here in the middle here. This combination in the middle, the combination of this beta naught and this beta one, they are the ones that are giving us the lowest RSS. Lowest RSS is there in the middle, right? Cool. And that was for ones that do not have, um, that don't have, what do you call this? Mm, that don't have any collinearity, right? That are not collinear, isn't it? So now, this could be the case of, let's say, balance, credit card balance, where we are predicting credit card balance based on age and uh, the limit in the account. There could be no correlation there. There could be no correlation there. Cool. Um, but now, if you're doing credit card balance and we put the person's rating, how are they rated by uh, debt? Let's say debt, debt boards, debt boards, right? How are they rated? How is their credit? credit rating and the limit that the person can be given the or the person the limit that the person has we can see that these are actually related they are related because if you have a bad limit if you have a bad limit or bad rating you probably have a low limit so they are sort of related right when you draw the contours when you plot the contours for these they're going to come out very narrow like this narrow like that narrow like that cool they're going to come out narrow like that and the best combination will be this and will be assumed to be that and that. So this bit, this limit and this. So this is the two case of using uh, variable predictor or yeah, using predictors that are, that, that are related and predictors that are not related, right? Um, what happens now when, when predictors are related, can you see they are squashed? The contour, contours are squashed or they run along a value so there is a broad range of values for the coefficient that result in the lowest values of the estimate here there was a single point the point at the bottom of the trough it was like this the bottom of the trough that is the lowest point the lowest rss but in this case we have a valley so which means contours could be something like this so the lowest point could be from here to there in the valley so which means this this is legitimate this is a legitimate lower point this is also a legitimate low point also a legitimate point. also a legitimate what it means is this could be could result in a legitimate combination of beta naught and beta one legitimate combination of beta naught beta one legitimate legitimate right so uh it will result in a broad range of values for the coefficient estimates that result in equal values of RSS, even for, for, for the other levels there, right? Hence, a small change in data could cause the pair of coefficient values that yield the smallest RSS to move anywhere in this value. So they could move there, they could move here, they could move there, the beta nodes. So people will result in different beta nodes 
or even the same person because we have ch just changed our data just a little bit if we change it a little bit our beta naught and our beta one can change drastically right so this results in great as, as a great deal of asynchronity in our coefficient estimates our beta naught and our beta one reduction in accuracy of coefficient estimated also causes our standard error our standard error is going to grow our standard error is going to increase because now we do not we are not certain where this where the where this beta node where this beta node is or which beta node is going to be right which means our t statistic that we calculate by t statistic that is calculated you remember t statistic we say t statistic is equal to whatever that bj is in the standard error of bj right it means um t statistic that is calculated is going to decline as well because this is increasing so my t statistic is going to decline so we may fail to reject our h naught that says my bj is equal to zero because if we have a lost t statistic we'll be like ah we are happy this is, let's accept what let's accept b let's accept h naught when we fail to to reject h naught we might start ac we might miss out on we might miss out on accepting h1 h1 that says bj is not equal to zero right it's not equal to zero since our t statistic is low we'll be like ah okay we have to it's not significant so we have to accept it h naught when we accept h naught it means we have basically claimed that our bj our bj is equal to zero what that then means is it hides the relationship between our response and our bj or our predictor because we have said bj is equal to zero right we have said our bj is equal to zero which then hides the the relationship between let's say bj was talking about age bj times age it means we were now saying our uh, age doesn't matter in the balance but it could matter we just did it wrong we used things like rating and limit that were collinear yeah so to, to just explain that part a bit here in our case our h our y will be given by this times uh rating plus b2 times limit right so if they are collinear we are going to we are going to have these many many combinations of of rating and 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 and, and limit that give us the lowest rss right that give us the lowest lowest rss in this value that uncertainty increases our standard error. When it increases our standard error, our t-statistic falls because our standard error is, is, is increased. And it might fall to such an extent that we might say bj is not equal, is equal to zero. We might accept that bj is equal to zero. So here we might say rating is not important when actually maybe it was important, right? We might end up removing a coefficient that was actually important in our model. Just because we used, just because in our in our data there was collinearity, there was collinearity. So a better way it is to to identify the, is to use something called the variance inflation factor or VIF. At R usually spits spits out this VIF when you do when you when you're coding. So this VIF. It is the ratio of the variance of bj when fitting the now model divided by the variance of bj if fit on its own okay so the what is happening here is let's write the equation vif the vif of bj of our estimated bj is going to be equal to one over the equation is this um one minus r squared um xj regressed on x minus j let's explain that part there so this part here it looks nasty but actually what we're just doing is we want to find if xj is correlated to any other variable let's say we have, we have these these uh, variables here this part here what it's basically saying is regress x x1 onto x2 and x3 that's what we're doing regress x1 onto x2 and x3 because if there is if there is collinearity if x1 is related to either x2 or x3 this part here it is the r squared you remember that when we, when you do a linear model 
and there is a there's a relationship between between variables so this is becoming our sort of like our why this is our why and these are our predictors right these are our predictors where we, we, we these are our predictors if there's a relationship between this y this x one here and any of these two our r squared is going to be large our r squared is going to be large because r squared measures what relationship between between a response and predictors if our r squared is large if it is close to one what is happening is going to be one minus something that is very close to one so it means this this bottom part is going to be very small if the bottom part is going to be very small this vif is going to be very close to one so and the smallest possible value is going to be um is going to be one it's going to be um no let me no, let me no no uh in that case it's not going to it's not going to equal one if there is if there is a relationship here which means in that relationship when we when we are regressing responses on each other like this we are sort of like measuring collinearity because if there's a relationship it means there's a collinear there's collinear collinearity between x1 and x x2 or x3 there is collinearity right so if that there's a relationship and we know from linear regression relationship leads to a large r squared so if there's a large r squared we're going to put a large number here it's going to be one minus a large number which is close to one because you know r squared is just between zero and one so let's say if if there's a relationship and r, r squared is one it means it's very close to one right so it's one minus let's say 0 0.9 that's going to 0 0.1 and one divided by zero point one leads to some a vi a large vif because it's one divided by zero point nine. One divided by zero point nine will lead to a large vif. So la large vif means there is collinearity in my data. It means it's, there's collinearity in my predictors. In predictors, my predictors have collinearity. But if there's no collinearity, what happens? When we regress, let's say x1, and we regress this on x2 and x3, our simple line, our, our linear regression model, our linear regression model is going to result in a in a low r squared because there is no relationship. There is no relationship between x1 and the other variables. That's why it's saying minus j. It's just saying regress xj on everything else besides that j. So it means our r squared is going to be low. When our r squared is low, let's say here is 0 0.1. It's 1 minus 0 0.1, and we are going to do 1 divided by that 0 0.1. I don't know why earlier I said 0 0.9. It's actually going to be 1 minus 0 0.9. Earlier it was going to be 0 0.1 and stuff like that. But I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to say here. It's going to be 1 divided by 0, 0 0.9. So it means if my VF is small, no collinearity. And the smallest value of VIF that you can get smallest value is equal to one that is the smallest vif you can get if you get one it means there is absolutely no collinearity how does that happen it happens when there's absolutely no relationship between let's let's i'm using x1 as an example it just happens when be, between when there's no relationship between your predictors let's say we are regressing x1 on these guys here when there is no relationship at all it means my r squared r squared which measures the relationship will be equal to zero because there's no relationship which means there's no collinear collinearity, which means yeah. one minus zero is just going to be one, one divided by one, one. So my smallest will be will be equal to one. Some people might ask, so what is the cutoff point? Usually, when you have a VIF that exceeds five or ten, then uh, you can say they are problemat problematic amounts of coll collinearity in your data right um so after identifying the, the uh, like the vif you have done the vifs and the collinearity you've identified which variables are collinear you can drop them because information of the problematic um variables is already captured in the other variable like yeah when we have collinearity between rating and limit we can drop limit in our variable in in our you know in our model we can drop limit we can drop limit because inside limit because of collinearity the information that was there is already being captured by rating the information is already being captured by by rating and the second solution is combining them you can actually combine them like rating into one variable times limit so we, we combine your your credit rating times the limit that you qualify for 
and you can call this credit worthiness we can call it a credit worthiness variable so you can combine them or you can drop them uh, you, you just play around like I said this is more of an art than a science you can play around with different methods to see which one gives you the best results so I hope I explained the six problems perfectly because these problems are going to bug bug uh, many people when they do when they do um, linear regression so basically we have come to the end of linear regression in the next video we are just going to recap recap what we what we did just one video recap what we studied and after after after, after recapping what we have studied we are going to move on to a lab in R, our first official lab in R, where we are now doing a bit of predictive modeling using linear regression so stay tuned for those two videos